All right, I want to talk to you today about what should you do with your old new version. Um, if you're out there and you've watched some of my videos and some of the other videos here on YouTube, a lot of good videos on the Bible version issue, and you're convinced that the King James Bible is God's Word and the new versions are not, and you want to get a King James Bible, the question is going to come up, what should you do with your new version? that you want to get rid of. You realize the corruption of it and now you need to get rid of it. What should you do? Uh, well, some of you are going to be tempted to say, well, you know, I can take it down to the used bookstore or I can sell it on eBay, make a little bit of money on it. Uh, don't do that. And I know the philosophy there. The philosophy is, well, somebody could get saved from it. You know, there's still some truth in it, all that stuff. Yeah, but that's not really the standard for a Christian. I'm going to show you what the Bible has to say about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, there's a story of a man that's actually guilty of fornication, committing fornication with his father's wife. Now, I don't know in the context there, you can't really tell, is it his birth mother or stepmother? I don't know. Either way, it's a very, very serious sin, very bad. And the Corinthian church was putting up with it. Just like a lot of churches out there today put up with sodomites and other fornicators and, and things in their congregations, and they're not getting rid of them. They're not kicking them out of the church. But I want to show you the scriptural principle here in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to begin at verse 6. It says here, Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. You see, you say, well, there's, there's uh, still a lot of truth in the NIV. Yeah, but that's not the standard. There's a little bit of leaven in there, actually a lot of leaven in the NIV. And it leavens the whole lump. It messes the whole thing up. And I can tell you from experience, this is a spiritually dead book. The Holy Spirit will not bear witness to this book. That's why the modern churches that use the NIV and the other Catholic Vatican versions like this, that's why they have no spiritual power. That's why they spend all their time talking about family issues and, and how to get along with your wife and everything else. They have no spiritual power. Okay? So... What you need to do, what we need to do is we need to take, not keep these things in circulation, put them out there in the, in, on the store shelves and everything. We need to get these things out of circulation. We need to send a very clear message to the people that are behind these new versions that these are corrupt and these are wicked and we don't want them on our store shelves. We don't want these in the hands of other Christians. Okay, don't, if, you've, if you're convicted about getting rid of this, don't give it to somebody else. Okay. That's a sin. Don't do that. Basically, you have four options. Okay? Number one, you can take this thing and you can throw it in the trash. Okay? You can take your new version and just, you know, I remember Gail Ripplinger said the one time, introduce it to the garbage can. That's an option. You can do that. And, of course, it'll end up, you know, in, in a garbage dump somewhere with all the other garbage, which would be appropriate. Uh, number two, you can follow the advice of Acts 19.19. 19. And you say, well, what's that say? Well, let's look at it here. It says, we'll start at verse 18. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. That's a lot of money, okay? You know, back then, uh, too, I'm sure that was a lot of money. 50,000 pieces of silver. That's a lot. See, money was not an issue. They didn't say, well, you know, we're really going to be losing money here. No. They didn't care how much money that they spent on their new version. They said, or not on their new version, but on their books, they threw them into the fire and burned them. And some people would say, well, yeah, but that was occult books and everything. And, and you know, I don't think it's the same for a Bible. Uh, I hate to tell you, it's worse for a Bible. This is a lot more occult than a book on witchcraft. You study the Bible sometime, whenever Satan shows up, he perverts scripture. He doesn't tell one person, hey, 
why don't you go over here and try to cast a spell? He doesn't do that. He says, yea, hath God said. That's Satan's field of influence. Okay, this is very, very bad. You are perfectly justified burning these things. I'm going to say a little bit more on that in just a second or two here. But look what happens in verse 19, Acts 19, I'm sorry, Acts 19, verse 20. Look what happens in Acts 19, 20 when the people take a strong stand. Look what happens. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. You see, when you take a very strong stand and you make your position clear why you're burning these, and you stand for the King James Bible, this book will grow. People will see this isn't a Laodicean wishy-washy type of a Christian. They're taking a strong stand. They're burning something that's obviously corrupt, and they're taking a stand on the Word of God for the English-speaking people right there, King James Bible. But having said that, I will say this. If you decide to burn your new version, please be careful about that. Why? Well, Romans chapter 14, we aren't going to go there, but you can read through Romans chapter 14, and it talks about you don't want to do anything that's going to cause a weaker brother to stumble. Okay, now there's a lot of modern Christians out there. I don't say that you, you know, if somebody's using a new version ignorantly, there's a lot of them that are saved. They just don't know any better, just like I used to be. Okay, I was raised in a church with a pastor that did, that, that, uh, did not teach against these new versions. He was went through the whole Alexandrian system, the, the Bible colleges, you know, and everything, how they brainwash students. And he came out supporting the new versions. I was using it. I honestly believe that this NIV right here, this one, I believed it was God's Word. Now, if I would have seen somebody yelling and screaming, calling me a Satanist for using it, and then throwing it angrily into the fire, I would have probably thought they were nuts. It would have offended me, okay? And the Bible talks that you're not to do anything to offend a weaker brother, okay? That doesn't mean that you have to compromise on the truth. It just means you have to be sensitive how you um, present the thing. I don't have one problem in the world with King James Bible believers burning new versions. I don't have a problem with it. I might do a video sometime at some point in the future doing that. I don't know. But at this point, I'm just saying, if you're going to do it, if you're going to burn your new version, make sure you exalt the Word of God, and make sure you explain why you're burning it, okay, before you do it. That's very important. Your attitude needs to be one of love and concern for the weaker brethren out there that are using these new versions ignorantly, okay? Keep that in mind if you're going to burn your new version. Now, your third option, which I've chosen to do right here, your third option is to keep your false new version to show people the truth, to show people the errors. Because what you're going to run into when you meet people, you're going to say, hey, the NIV took this verse out, the NIV says this, the NIV says that, and they'll say, I don't believe that. And at that point in time, it's very handy to have the thing and say, right there it is. I've taught different classes and things, and one time I, I got a chance to teach a whole bunch of kids. It was a bus ministry, and there was a whole bunch of little kids. And I called. I said, do I have a volunteer? And, of course, you know, they all put their hands up. They want to, you know, volunteer for things. And uh, this little boy came up, and I said, all right, I'm going to read a verse out of my King James Bible, and I want you to read it out of the NIV. So I read the verse, and I said, okay, look up Acts 8.37. So he's looking, and, and I see him. He takes his finger, and he's... He looks up at me like, you know, <laughs> it was great. So there are good opportunities to use these new versions to show people the corruption. But I want to show you here real quick what you need to do if you're going to keep your new version. Okay, let me show you this. Okay, I have here a nice new English Standard Version. Just got this thing a little while ago. And uh, what I do typically whenever I buy one of these new versions is I want to clearly mark it that this thing is for documentation purposes only. Okay, so what I do is I'll open it up. Look at those nice new white pages. And then I have here, let me zoom in a little bit so you can read this. I made up these stickers on my printer. 
Warning, this book is satanic. It is, used, it is to be used for documentation purposes only. I knew a preacher the one time that he used to use, there was an old sticker, the Mr. Yuck or whatever, he, for poison, you know. But you go in here where it's very in inconvenient to remove these and uh, if I can get the thing started here about the contents, I'll put a sticker there warning people. Then usually I'll do one in the front and I'll do one in the back someplace. Find a good spot for it, a nice blank area. Uh, they don't always cooperate. Uh, there's a good spot. What you want to do is you're clearly marking this for after the rapture when you're gone and somebody comes into your house and finds all these new versions. You don't want to be confused about what is truly God's Word. Now, see this page right here, if you write something on this, come on, focus here, if you write something on this page, somebody can just cut this out and then the, the thing will look okay. They can peel your stickers off. So what you want to do is you want to get a good marker like this and you just want to write uh, this book is a wicked perversion of God's true word Make sure you spell your word there with the lowercase w. That's how it's supposed to be. Comma. The King James Bible. Okay. That way there's really no way that they can get rid of it. Okay. This thing is going to be pretty much ruined from now till <laughs> uh, the Lord comes. And uh, yeah, you can you can use orange or whatever too. I mean, um, warning. Boy, you can barely make that out. People will be able to read it in here. This is a Vatican version. I yeah, have a lot of fun with this. Use only the King James Bible. There you go. That way you can be sure that uh, no matter what happens this thing is never going to fall into the hands of somebody innocent. Now you can go in through here and you can mark verse perversions, you know, highlight things and stuff like that. I do that a lot. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter if it bleeds through or anything because it's a wicked perversion anyhow. You can do that. A lot of times I'll keep, I won't write across the pages or anything because I want to keep the text fairly clean so I can use it to show the corruption. But, uh, you know, here's another blank page. You could, you know, put another put another sticker there you know you, you just want to clearly mark it so that so that nobody gets messed up using this thing and of course I could write in the back here too so make sure you do that just to show you real quickly here I have I used to make these little tags up um, you can say this book is for uh, documentation purposes Warning, this is not a real Bible. The King James Version is God's Word. The NIV is not. You know, it doesn't really matter. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do. But if you're going to keep your new version, make sure that you clearly identify within its pages somewhere that it is corrupt and it's only for documentation and the King James Bible is God's true Word. Okay, now there is a fourth option uh, which the Lord has kind of placed on my heart. And the fourth option is if you have a new version and you want to get rid of it, but you don't feel right throwing it in the trash and you don't feel right burning it and you really don't want to keep the thing around, 
then I will offer you probably the best deal of all, and that is send your new version to me at King James Video Ministries. Um, I'm going to put up the address at the end. It's King James Video Ministries, um, P.O. Box 161, Hopeland, PA, 17533 is our address here at the ministry. You can send me your new version, and I will replace it with a King James version. Okay, it's not going to be the very best one, the highest, most expensive one. I'm not going to send you a $110 Cambridge or something. Okay, but I'll send you a decent one to replace your old version. And then I will dispose of it. Maybe someday I'll, it'll be part of the book burning thing. I don't know. We'll see. But I will do that. Now, if you have a bunch of them and you send me 10 of them, don't think that you're going to get 10 new or 10 King James Bibles to replace it. Okay, I don't have that kind of money. All right, um, I will offer that as a solution, something that you can do. And if you want that, send it to our ministry here and include a little note just saying, I would like to exchange this for a King James Bible. And I'll do that for you. Okay, that's your fourth option. And here as we close, I want to give you just a few more verses, four more verses. Um, it says here in Acts chapter 20, verse 29 through 32, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Okay? Here's your hope for the future. Not me. I'm not your infallible guide. Right there. King James Bible. This is what's going to keep, keep you out of trouble. This is what's going to help you discern when you're dealing with a false prophet. Okay? Live by the Word of God. Somebody tells you something... You should be saying this or you should be doing that. You look it up in this book. And if it's not in there, forget what the person said. Okay? And don't mess with these new versions that speak perverse things. These perversions. Stay away from them. So your four options, I believe, that are right for a Christian that's found out the truth about these new versions. Number one, well, first and foremost, don't give it to a used bookstore. Don't try to sell it. Don't try to make money. Okay, they lost 50,000 pieces of silver burning the books back there in Acts 19. Okay, don't try to sell it. Don't try to make money. Don't give it to somebody. You need to get these things out of circulation. So number one, you can throw it in the garbage. Number two, you can burn it. But be careful the spirit that you do it in. Number three, you can keep it and do what I showed you clearly mark it that it's corrupt and that the King James Bible is you know, God's Word. You can do that. And number four, you can send it to me here at King James Video Ministries and I'll replace it with the King James Bible. Those are your options. So, thank you for watching and I pray that the Lord would help you to make the right decision in this issue. Thank you.